Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So I was thinking about what I wanted to film today and I kind of was thinking about what video I really enjoyed making most recently. And I think the one that I had the most fun thinking about was my if I could only keep 10 eyeshadow palettes video. I will leave a link to that video in the description down below, but it was a really fun kind of thought experiment, kind of seeing what my priorities would be if I had to narrow down part of my collection. So I decided I kind of wanted to continue that maybe as a series. So today I want to talk about what I would keep if I could only keep five each of foundations and concealers. So disclaimer, because I got a little heat in the comments section of my eyeshadow palette video, I understand that nobody needs even 10 eyeshadow palettes or even five foundations or concealers. I have been collecting makeup for the better part of a decade and this is what I do for fun. This is my hobby, this is my passion and it's what I do on YouTube. So yes, I have a lot of makeup, but I wanna tell you guys about the stuff that I think is the best and what to avoid. So that's kind of why I'm here. So I decided to go with five today instead of 10 because I don't have nearly as many foundations and concealers as I do eyeshadow palettes and five felt like more of a challenge. 10 would have been pretty easy. So without any further ado, let's start with the five foundations I would keep if I could only have these five. So the first thing that came to mind, no question, easy, easy decision is uh, my NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This is my baby. Uh, this is my favorite foundation in my collection. If I could only have one, it, it would be this one. She's my ride or die, the GOAT, probably the best foundation I've ever tried in my life. It, it just really is that good. Yeah, it's a $50 foundation, I understand that. But I mean, for, for this one, you're getting what you pay for, you really are. It is so thin in texture, it's like serum thin, but it has amazing coverage, it has a beautiful dewy finish, but it still lasts like like my double wear, like some of my longest lasting foundations, this lasts just as long while still giving you just this airbrushed look and a dewy glow, it's, it's, it's insane. I've never tried a foundation like this one. From the first time I put it on, I was like, this is different, this is special, and it is. So this, I refuse to be parted from, and yeah, easy decision. Number one thing that I would have to keep would be NARS Light Reflecting. Number two, however, is actually a drugstore foundation. This is my Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. I feel like I've talked about this a lot recently, but I think with good reason. It's an amazing foundation. This one really surprised me. I bought this on Amazon out of curiosity for like $10, I think. And the first time I wore it, I actually wore it to a party in the middle of summer, and it was an outdoor party. So I was like, oh, this is kind of taking a risk, but let's see what happens. My skin looked immaculate, immaculate. This one is a little bit thicker in consistency than the NARS, but not like thick, thick by any means. It has incredible coverage, medium, minimum, full if you build it there. It's very easy to build it there. It also lasts an incredibly long time. And I really feel like the claim that it's a hydrating foundation holds true. I get that incredible long wear and kind of a satin, maybe natural finish, but with no feeling like my skin is stripped or dry or having to like aggressively hydrate in preparation to use it. Looking at you, Double Wear. Double Wear has a time and a place, but if you're dry, ooh, you, you better hydrate. But yes, to make a long story short, this is an incredible foundation at an incredible price point. So if I was keeping only five, this is one that I could use over and over and over and over and over again and use up and repurchase without quite as much guilt as if I did it with the NARS foundation. I'd still do it with the NARS foundation, but it would hurt a little more. So this makes perfect sense to keep as one of my five as well. Going back in the expensive direction, unfortunately, um, this is the Dior Backstage Foundation. <laughs> It's actually not as bad as it seems like it would be for a luxury brand, right? I think this is $40 a bottle and you get like 1.5 or 1.7 ounces or something like that, where a normal bottle of foundation is one ounce. So you're actually getting more of this for the same price as a standard foundation bottle. Like you're paying 50 for this, which is an ounce, and you're paying 40 for this, which is an ounce and a half, maybe more. So I think actually it's not that bad of a deal. This foundation is just so special. It is like 
watery thin. I mean, so, so water. And I think that's kind of what all of these foundations have in common. None of them is particularly thick because that's my preference in foundation. I find that thin textures really just kind of gloss over your pores instead of kind of emphasizing them. And I really like that. But this has this really incredible property where it literally blurs your skin. It dries down to kind of a demi matte finish but it literally just makes it look like you have an airbrushed face. It's so crazy. The other thing that I think is really cool about this is that it doesn't have a ton of coverage when you first put it on. So you can definitely do a pretty sheer layer of this and just get a hint of coverage with that blurring effect. But I've been able to build this up to like medium coverage with no problem. It never picks up. It still lasts an insane amount of time. I'm sure you're starting to see kind of the things that I value in a foundation. But this is just, I can't explain the things this foundation does. I can't explain how it lasts the way it does, how it makes your face look like you have a filter on, or the flexibility of the coverage. It's just so versatile and so beautiful. And I, I just, I think I'd have to have this one. If I could have five, this has to be there. <laughs> the next one I thought about removing because in a lot of ways, it's very similar to me anyway, to the Dior. Really, the only difference is the finish. This one's more of a glowy finish, while the Dior is a little bit more of a demi-matte. But I don't think I could pick between them. I have been so into this, like, super thin texture, versatile coverage type of thing lately that from where I'm standing right now, I would keep both in my five. This is the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body and again, it has so many of the same things as the Dior. It's watery thin, it can go on fairly sheer at first, and you can build it up to what I would define as a medium coverage. It also lasts an incredibly long time. It also blurs over all your imperfections, but the main difference, like I said, is that this one has a little bit more of a luminous finish. It's not like super, super glowy, but it's definitely got more of that dewy feel, whereas the Dior, like I said, is a little bit more natural matte. So I have no idea what I'm going to do when I run out of this. I might just repurchase it full price because I bought it at a TJ Maxx on sheer luck and absolutely fell in love with it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but one way or another, I had to include this one. I, it's just, it's been one of my go-to complexion products lately. So last but not least for my five foundation picks, I decided I wanted like a true tinted moisturizer, something with a little bit sheerer coverage that, you know, added some hydration to the skin that I felt like I could wear on an everyday basis and that felt like I wasn't doing too much, you know? But this one also works really well because it's also very affordable. So since it would be kind of my everyday option, I would feel no guilt at all going through this at a rapid pace. This is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I have talked about this ad nauseum on this channel, it feels like, but it really is that good. I picked this out of literally any high-end tinted moisturizer I've ever tried and all my other drugstore picks, many of which I love very much, but none of them are really like this one. This just does such beautiful things for your skin. It makes you look so smooth and hydrated without being overly dewy. It definitely has a little bit of that just like healthy glow to the skin. It describes itself as sheer to medium coverage, and I agree with that completely, actually. Kind of similar to what I was saying with these two other foundations. I feel like this one does something very similar, but it feels like I'm committing a little bit less. I don't know, maybe, in my, maybe it's just in my brain, but I feel like the Dior and the MAC are like, oh, these are my nice foundations. But this one, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna slap that on and just head out the door. It feels super low maintenance and is also so hydrating that it literally feels like I'm delivering skincare benefits to my skin while I'm wearing it. It's, it's just so good. This is like six or seven dollars, so if you haven't tried it yet, I am begging you to hop on this train because you will not be disappointed. So those are my five foundations that I would keep in my collection right now if I was only allowed to have five of them. I think it provides me a pretty good range of options, but also kind of sticks to what I've been into right now. So moving on, let's talk about the five concealers that I would keep if I could only have five concealers. This was actually fairly easy to decide on. I thought this would take more effort, but honestly, I, I have these five that I just keep using over and over and over again that like I'd be a little bit sad if I didn't have the rest of them, but th this would be a collection that I'd be very happy with. So. First things first, shocking absolutely no one, is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. 
this is my number one. This is my ride or die. If I could have exactly one concealer, it would be this one. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is perfection. It is once again, super, super thin in texture. Serum is a very accurate descriptor. It is so hydrating and delicious on the skin. As a dry skin girly, I could not live without this. It smooths out my under eyes and hydrates them so I never get all of the crackly dry skin look under my eyes that drives me absolutely nuts. I can also use this all over my face and it makes a beautiful all over complexion product as well. So I mean, versatile in that way too. I, I just, this is the go-to when I don't wanna think about what concealer I'm using. I pull this out and just slather it on. I'm obsessed with this. I could not be without this in my concealer collection. Another kind of miracle product that I, now that I have it in my life, need to have in my life all the time is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Pot Concealer. This is kind of magical. I, I don't really know. It's this matte concealer in a pot, duh. But the, the unique thing about it is the texture. It has almost this like moussey quality that because of the silicones in it, it blurs over everything. Like it blurs over pores in kind of a really interesting way. But for me, the most remarkable thing about that blurring property is how it looks over blemishes. I use this as a spot concealer. So I put this on on top of like pimples a lot, right? And so a lot of the time a pimple will come with, you know, adding actual texture to your face. You know, it is raised off the surface of your face. And a lot of times I can use other products to get rid of the redness over a pimple, but it's really hard to cover up the actual raised bump on your skin. For some reason, this reduces the look of that raised bump. Like you're never gonna get rid of it completely, especially if it's pretty large, but it actually makes it look flattened just from the blurring quality. I literally, I, I cannot explain this, but basically how I use it is just take this and after primer, but before foundation, I will smooth this over any areas that are too red, where I have a pimple, where I have an acne scar, where anything like that is happening, and it will just, A, cover it completely. I mean, this is an ultra full coverage matte concealer, but B, it will decrease the texture over those areas too. I don't know, this formula is weird. Touch it in store and you might see what I mean, but honestly, truly, it's kind of a life-changing formula. Just if you're an acne prone girl, this is a secret weapon, trust and believe. So as an acne prone girl, this has to be in the concealer collection, no doubt. So my next couple picks are semi-similar, I think. I'm a pretty full coverage girl most of the time. If I'm gonna go for a concealer, I want it to cover everything. And this next one I love because it also doubles as a full coverage foundation product for me. And the lasting power is insane and a little bit goes a very long way. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. This stuff is so good that I ended up with it in like four different shades because I just, I was having kind of a hard time finding the correct shade for me, but to me it was worth it to literally just like keep collecting shades that I could mix together. It's a great formula. Like I said, a teeny tiny bit goes a super long way. It takes like two dots on your under eyes and then like a couple dots on all the parts of the skin to use this as a foundation product. It blurs, not quite as much as that NARS concealer, but it definitely has a blurring property. And so I really feel like it works very well all over the face as well. When I'm feeling lazy, I will literally just take this. It's like got a massive doe foot and I will just go dee -dee 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 all over the skin, blend it in and call it a day. Coverage is insane. The finish is insane. The bang for your buck is insane. I think one of these is 30, maybe $32. And you get half an ounce of product. For a concealer, that's like double the amount of any other concealer at least for pretty much the same price. So the value is great as well. It's a classic for a reason, it really is. This is a phenomenal concealer and I, I don't wanna be without it. I don't wanna be without it, it's too good. Another full coverage pick, a little bit less mattifying. So the Too Faced one has a little bit more of a matte finish. This one has what I would describe as more of a satin finish, but might even be even fuller coverage. I mean, like this gets to a point where if you use more than a teeny, teeny, tiny amount, it can actually start to kind of gunk up. So there is a learning curve with this one, but the finished product, once you learn how to use it, is so good. It's the Pat McGrath 
what is this called? What I always forget what it's called. Skin Fetish Sublime Concealer. Holy cow, you guys. I know this is a luxury price point, but it is so good. Coverage wise, this stuff is like white out. It's like you've never had a dark circle under your eyes in your whole life. And then texture wise, it's really, really beautiful, super creamy, and it's got a little bit of a hydratingness to it that I think that the Too Faced one lacks. And like I said, I mean, it's insane what this does to my under eyes. Very tiny amount blurs right over your under eyes and makes it look like your skin is just like the most flawless it's ever been in your life ever from the day you were born. <laughs> I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it really is crazy. I mean, a luxury brand should, you know, do all of this and then also file your taxes, but this is about as close as you're going to get. <laughs> it really is so good. And if I was only going to keep five of my concealers, I, I don't think I'd be able to part with this one. I just love it too much. So last but certainly not least, I decided that again, I kind of wanted more of an everyday friendly product. Not that I can't use those other ones on the everyday, but I wanted something that's a little bit lighter in coverage that I can just pat onto my under eyes if I'm looking extra tired and I don't have to worry about it creasing or cracking or making my under eyes look dry or anything like that. It'll just cancel out a little bit of the darkness so I look slightly less dead. For me, the thing that I go to for that always is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Conceal Stick. This is such a hidden gem at the drugstore. I feel like more people need to talk about this. I will say, I think the reason that a lot of people don't is the shade range is kind of an atrocity. I, it, it's, it's sad, like how few people can use this because the formula is so good. Wet n Wild, this is my ardent plea to come out with more shades of this stick because it's crazy. This is just so thin in texture. I mean, really, really thin but it's also got this emollient texture that is so nice under the eyes. It's just so creamy and keeps my under eyes hydrated for hours. It never breaks up. Even if I don't set it with powder, it doesn't break up. Despite the fact that it has that emollient texture, it really does dry down and also kind of blurs over your under eyes. It provides just enough coverage. I mean, it's it's buildable. You could build it up to more, but because of that emollient texture, I try to use a pretty small amount so it doesn't start kind of creasing and bunching up. I've noticed that some products with this type of texture can do that. Have I ever noticed this doing it? No, but usually I'm just trying to get a little bit of the dark circles under my eyes canceled out and then not have to worry about it again for the rest of the day. And this is that product. It really is special. I'm telling you, Wet n Wild, please, more shades. More shades so that people who aren't the color of uncooked chicken are able to use this product because it is so beautiful. Healthcare girlies, a must. If you just, if you want the five minute makeup routine, this, tap, 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 you will look just a little bit more alive. <laughs> So that is it, you guys. Those are the five foundations and five concealers that I would keep if that was all I could have in my collection. Again, I am aware that for most people, five foundations or five concealers is already a huge collection. This is just coming from someone who has tried a lot of makeup, owns a lot of makeup, and wants you guys to know what I think is the most worth keeping in your collection. So if you enjoyed this video and you got anything out of it, please hit like down below. Leave me a comment and let me know what foundations and concealers you would be keeping if you had to get rid of everything else. I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you wanna see more of this type of video and swatch videos and favorites videos and try on videos and all other kinds of makeup and beauty content, please hit subscribe. I would absolutely love to have you. Until the next one, bye you guys.